Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Florida. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a plan and profile in AutoCAD Civil 3D. Plan and profiles are the key building blocks in a construction plan set, especially for roadway and utilities. Now, in order to even create a plan and profile, you will need two things. The first thing that you'll need is an alignment. And the second thing that you'll need is a surface. And in this case, we are going to be using the existing surface that we have for this project. Once you have those two features, you can actually go ahead and create a plan and profile. But I'm going to quit talking and I'm just going to dive right into it. All right, so here is our example project over here. And what we are going to be doing is we are going to take a plan and profile along this road here. We have a residential neighborhood and we want to create a plan and profile of this road to set the PGLs, which is the profile grade line. And we wanna start showing all of the utilities within this plan and profile, but we have to take it one step at a time. So the first step to even creating a plan and profile is to create an alignment. Now, if you haven't already, what you'll need to do is first create some sort of center line of the roadway. So here I have this center line of the roadway all drawn out and it is right in the middle. It is the midpoint between the edge of pavement, this little cyan line, and then this little cyan line. Now these two blue lines are representing the curb and these yellow lines right here are the sidewalk, but we're not really gonna be getting into sidewalk. We are going to be creating an alignment of this center line here. All right, now the easiest way to create an alignment is I really like to just go up to my home tab. You can do almost anything in your home tab. You don't have to always memorize all of these different commands. You start scouring up here, you're gonna notice a lot of really good features. And right here is where our alignment button is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and let's see what our options are. It looks like we have a ton of options that we can choose from. And I really like a lot of these different options. If you did, let's say, have some sort of pressure network, or maybe you had a storm sewer run or sanitary sewer run, you can create an alignment from that run. But we're gonna do the very simple one here, and we're gonna do create alignment from objects because we already have an object right there that we want to create an alignment from. So once you select create an alignment from objects, it's going to ask you to select the first line, arc, or polyline. And again, we created a polyline here. You can create a polyline by doing PL or typing in polyline. So we're gonna go ahead and click this center line. Now after I press enter, it's gonna ask and, and prompt something else. Press enter to accept the alignment direction. Now we will have to find this little slope arrow. You see this little slope arrow? So that was created and it's asking us if this is the direction that we want to go. So I'm actually good with this arrow and I'm just going to press spacebar or enter. Again, spacebar is also the same as enter. So now it's going to ask us to create alignment from objects and we can go ahead and give it a name so in this case, I might just wanna call it Street A. Now it's gonna ask us a couple more questions uh, about sites. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that. You can leave it as none for now. And then it's gonna ask us for our style, which I'm fine. I will be using this style that I have. Now, depending on your company or if you just have a very basic level of, of CAD and you don't have any styles, you, you might have some default styles in here. Every style will be different. Now, the layer is gonna be on layer zero once I create it. Uh, I can always change this layer, so I'm not too worried about that. And alignment label set. So when I start slapping on some labels, this will be a certain style of those labels. Last but not least, add curves between tangents. I always leave it to the default. Um, and this last button here is pretty important. So do I want to erase existing entities? That means do I wanna erase that line that I already have drawn? I don't necessarily wanna do that because I feel like that line's pretty useful, so I want to make sure it still exists, and I'm gonna click that button. And now I'm cooking with fire. Now notice how already it put a little tick mark. So let's zoom out here, and I'm gonna pan along this road. We've created our alignment. It was as easy as that. You know, I kept yapping, but that probably took less than a minute there. We've already created 
one of the building blocks for this plan and profile. Got okay, it. so now we're actually ready to create our profile. So again, all of your wonderful tools are in this home ribbon. I'm gonna go up here right below alignment and click profile. And it's going to ask us if we want to create a surface profile. Now the big difference between create surface profile and quick profile is a quick profile is exactly what it says it is. It's quick, it's dirty, and it doesn't save after you save the drawing. So be very, very cognizant of that. We wanna create these profiles because we are going to be putting them into our plan sets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do create surface profile and this dialog box pops up and it looks like we have an alignment street A Here's our start and end points. And over here, it says select a surface. Well, I'm not seeing anything in here. And if I go to this tool space, you can type in tool space to get this to pop up. I am not seeing any surface in this drawing. Now I know I have a surface for this project, so I kind of need to take one more step here. And I'm gonna show you how to get this surface you know, into this drawing because I wanna keep things clean. I don't like having my existing surface in multiple drawings. It just creates for more errors down the road and it creates heavy files. So I do have an existing surface file here that I want to create a reference for. So we're going to create a data shortcut and think of a data shortcut, guys, as just a smart XREF. Now, if you don't know what I'm even talking about, and if all this is way too advanced, go check out some of my other videos. I do have videos about how to create data shortcuts, what data shortcuts are, what external references are. So I would definitely go check that out. Now, the first thing that I even need to do for that is I need to actually to create a new data shortcuts project folder. I'm going to do a new data shortcuts folder. I'm just picking where these two drawings live as my shortcut file. So I'm just gonna do example project, go ahead and create a shortcuts folder. Now I have a shortcut folder because you need a shortcut folder because this is where your data is going to live so you can actually reference it. So since I wanna create a reference surface, what I can do, what I can do is right click that data shortcut and I'm going to create a data shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this data shortcut. Now that we've set the folder, I can go ahead and right click data shortcut and do create data shortcut. We're gonna get a dialog box that pops up here and it knows what is smart in this drawing. Smart being surfaces, pipe networks, anything over here in this tool space. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that surface, press okay. And now I've created a data shortcut. So now since I've created this data shortcut, I can reference it in to our example project where our alignments live. And again, this is important because we need these two things. We need the alignment and we need the surface. So notice here now that I'm connected to my data shortcuts project folder and I'm gonna go to surfaces. When you see that little arrow guy, that means that it's a data shortcut. So I'm gonna right click that and I'm gonna do create reference. And what I'm doing is I'm referencing it into this drawing. I'm not copying and pasting it. That's a huge difference here. Okay, now that we got this dialog box, we're gonna create our surface reference. I don't care if it's on layer zero for now, I can always change that. I really don't mind. I want it to keep the same name. Uh, we can change the style if we want. I kind of just want something hidden, but for right now, it really doesn't matter. I can see how this pops up. So it looks like this style just shows the boundary, which is fine. I, I really don't care. I don't, I don't want this program to use a whole bunch of data. I kind of do just want it hidden. Well, we're really, really close. We have our alignments and then we have our surface and now we can go back to creating our profile. Let's go to the home ribbon tab up here. Let's, get, let's click profile, create surface profile. And now we can see that our surface is in there. So we're gonna create an alignment street A, select our surface, and we are going to add that surface to this plan and profile. Now we have everything we need to finally create the plan and profile. In order to draw it, I'm gonna go click here, draw in profile view. And you can sort through all of these if you want. I will definitely just cycle through them for this video, but it's, 
essentially just you know the building blocks of our profile. We got our street A alignment. We can give our profile view a name. We can name it whatever we want. So we can name it street A. We can give it a description if we want. Now we have certain styles in here. Now I don't mind the standard style and then all the profiles are going to be on a certain layer. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. So station range, I want the whole I want the whole alignment. So I'm going from zero to 13, nine, four. Uh, and what that tells me is that this alignment is 1,394 feet. I can also do a user specified range if I want to, but I'm gonna leave this as automatic. Now we also have a profile view height. It can be automatic, but I'm actually, I wanna create some depth with these profiles here. So I'm going to do I'm gonna do 30 here and then maybe 60. And I'm not gonna get into any of this other stuff. You can add bands so you can show finish grade, existing grade, but I'm gonna make this really bare bones profile here. So now we're ready to create our profile view and it's going to ask select where I want this to live. I usually like to go over here in space and organize my profiles. So here we have our profile view of street A. Now this isn't my favorite style, but this will definitely get the job done here. So here's what this plan and profile is showing. This is along the road starting at station zero, and it's working down that entire road, and it's showing the existing grade going along that alignment. Now I know you see all these labels, you can delete them, so I'm gonna go ahead and click those and just press erase. I can also delete all of these great elevations there, and then you can get something that looks like that. And again, I don't love this style. You can make this style however you want it. Uh, I do have a video on how to create different styles, so feel free to check that out. But this will be the starting point of us creating a PGL, and that'll be in the very next video. This is the first step of the plan and profiles. The next step is creating a PGL, which is a profile grade line. This is how we're actually designing our road. Because again, this existing surface is what is existing in the real world. We're going to be building a road on top of it. Appreciate everyone tuning in. I hope this video helped. I wanted to show you guys how easy it was to create your own plan and profile for a road. And if this video helped you, please hit the like and subscribe button and follow more of my content. I also have a TikTok page where I do day in the life of a civil engineer. So feel free to check that out. Hope everyone has a good day and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.